Tyler from Louisville, Kentucky. I think I pronounced that right this time. Louisville, Kentucky asks, my question is this, where would you point a new believer to start reading their Bible? I have heard it suggested that John's gospel is a good place to start. What do you say, Pastor John? Well, as I thought about this, it would be easy to pick out one or two places and say, start there. But here's what I think needs to be emphasized. Let's Let's make sure that we say to the new believer, you are launching on a lifetime of Bible reading. You know, say to yourself, okay, I've been a Christian 10 years, or for John Piper, it would be 63 years, and I read my Bible every day. You are launching out on a lifetime of engaging with God in the Bible. So build into their mindset, wherever you start, you're going forever. You're going forever in the Bible. This is not about merely starting. And and you might point out to them, you know, in my Bible, uh, there's X number of pages in the New Testament. And in, if you take three pages a day, you'll read the Bible in, in three months. I mean, you'll read the New Testament in three months. You could approach it that way. And just make sure they get the mindset, I'm moving through all of this book. I'm not just taking a verse here and a verse there. Then here's another thing I, I would do. If, if they are utterly unacquainted with the New Testament, I would take five minutes and sit down with them and show them how the New Testament's laid out. I would say, here are four books called Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the books about the historical foundations of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Get that. Number two, here's the book of Acts. This is the story of how the early church, after Jesus went back to heaven, got started and launched by the power of the Holy Spirit and how the church took root because of what Jesus had done. And then here's this group called Letters. Uh, these are the authoritative apostles, the spokesmen for the risen Christ, teaching the church how to live uh, in the church and in society. And then here's this strange book at the end called Revelation, which describes the victory of God at the end of the age. Now they've got the whole New Testament figured out, right? they got Gospels, Acts, Epistles, Revelation, and say, now you can, you can jump in anywhere, know what you're jumping into. And then you might say, well, look, since it's put together under God's guidance this way, probably you should read it this way. <laughs> uh, let's, let's just go from beginning to end and read the Gospels, read Acts, read Romans, uh, and right on through the epistles. Or, here's one last suggestion. You might say, look, if you'd like to go on the fast track here and read one of these Gospels, one of these epistles, and maybe get the church history down. Let's do it this way. Luke Acts is one book. Then show them that. Show them the first verses of Luke, first verses of Acts, and how it's one volume. They say, oh, that's cool. Uh, you got one man writing a double volume about the foundations and then about the expansion of the church. And then say, and by the way, he was a really good friend of a man named Paul, traveled with him for 20 years, and he wrote his biggest book, Romans. So stick that on too. So read Luke Acts, and Romans. And that might be a very concrete way to begin. Now, you got to qualify like this, Tony. This might be a six-year-old you're talking to. <laughs> it might be a blue-collar worker who finished eighth grade and dropped out of school because of dyslexia and barely can read. So you can't just make assumptions uh, from what I've just said. Uh, that, that what I just said may be so naive. Here's, here's the, the big picture. A new believer needs a church with solid preaching, vital corporate worship, a small group of relationships where he can ask lots of questions and where if he's not a reader, he can get all the help in the world to make his way through little by little. So in other words, know the person you're, you're talking to and give them wise counsel yes. based on what you know. Excellent. Thank you, Pastor John. And speaking of making sense of the Bible, what are we to do with this book called The Song of Solomon? Is it to be read only literally as a communication between a husband and a wife, or does it hold allegorical meaning between Christ and the church? We'll be back to tackle that tomorrow. Until then, I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Please check us out online at DesiringGod.org.